Do you need the latest MacBook Pro or is last year's M1 MacBook Air still good enough? Let's talk about it. Hi, this is Dave of Tech for Bubba, a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing to the channel. In today's video, let's look at the major differences between last year's MacBook Air and this year's new MacBook Pro to see which one is better for you. Instead of benchmarks, which many great videos have already gone over, I'll share my experiences having used the MacBook Air as my main computer over the last year and the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros over the last month. With the introduction of the new 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros, Apple has finished transitioning all the MacBooks from Intel inside to Apple inside. But let's start from the outside and work our way in. First, the most obvious, size and weight. Simply put, the MacBook Air is smaller, thinner for the most part, and lighter. MacBook Air is 11.97 inches by 8.36 inches, while the 14-inch MacBook Pro is 12.31 inches by 8.71 inches. The Air actually starts a bit thicker in the back at 0.63 inches, but tapers off to a very thin front edge of only 0.16 inches. I still remember how fascinated I was when Steve Jobs pulled out that first MacBook Air from an envelope so many years ago. Let me take it out here. This is the new MacBook Air. The 14-inch MacBook Pro has the new boxier design at 0.61 inches all the way to the edges. The Air weighs 2.8 pounds, and the Pro is 3.5 pounds. Here's the Air on top of the Pro. You can see how the Pro sticks out just a little bit. From the side, the Air is much thinner towards the front. Every time I switch from the Pro back to the Air this past month, I notice how much smaller and lighter the Air is to carry around. While we're looking at the outside, in addition to the familiar space gray and silver colors, the Air comes in this nice, unique gold color. Next, ports are back on the Pros. Thanks, Apple. The Air has only two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports on the left and a headphone jack on the right. Sufficient for some, and many of us just have dongles all over the house. The new Pro now has a MagSafe charging port in addition to these two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports and the headphone jack on the left. An HDMI port, another Thunderbolt 4 USB-C port, and finally, the SD card reader, which I use almost every day on the right. No more dongles for me for the most part. I'm so thankful. Opening the laptops. The next major difference is in their displays. The Air has the 13.3-inch Retina display with P3 white color and True Tone, up to 400 nits brightness. A nice color-accurate display, but the Pro got a huge display upgrade this year. It's bigger at 14.2 inches. It's Liquid Retina XDR similar to the latest 12.9-inch iPad Pro. And Apple $6,000 XDR display. It's very bright when there's HDR content at 1,000 nits sustain and 1,600 nits peak brightness. Has a million to one contrast ratio. Also, for the first time on a Mac, there's ProMotion with adaptive refresh rate up to 120 hertz like the latest iPad Pros and iPhone 13 Pros. Oh, but there's that notch that's hard to miss on the Pros. It does house an upgraded 1080p FaceTime camera, which works a lot better than the data 720p camera on the Air. Having the notch also allows the Pro display to have a very thin bezel almost all the way around. I take the notch with a better camera and bigger screen any day. Just wish the notch is a little bit smaller. If you'd like to connect to external monitors, M1 MacBooks only supports one. The Pro laptops can support two with the M1 Pro chip and four with the M1 Max chip. The keys and the keyboard action feels the same to me, which is good. Both the Air and the Pro no longer have the touch bar. The physical function keys and the fingerprint sensor are now full size on the Pro, which is even better. They also sit in a black well, which some may prefer. The trackpads works the same, which is very good on both. It is a little bigger on the Pro models. 
I do wish the trackpad is just a little bit bigger on the Air sometimes. So the little bigger trackpad on the Pro is just right for me. Both the mics and the speakers have been upgraded on the Pro. Here's how the mics sound recording directly with the mics on the Air. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not bad for a laptop. And switching over to the studio quality mics on the Pro, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pretty good too. To be honest, I can't really tell too much difference between the two. The upgrade on the speakers is more clear to me. Instead of two speakers, the Pro has a six-speaker system with woofers. Here's what the speakers on the air sound like. Until then, remember to cherish each moment. And here's how the 14-inch MacBook Pro sounds. Until then, remember to cherish each moment. The Pro sounds clearly better to me. It's louder, fuller, with more definition. The Pros have the best speakers I've heard on laptops. Let's go further inside now. The big difference between the Air and the Pro is the Apple SoC, or System on Chip. The M1 inside the Air has been a marvel for a processor engineer like me. It's amazing how it's faster and uses less power at the same time. Apple took it further with M1 Pro and M1 Max chips in these new MacBook Pros. They're much faster with more cores and coprocessor engines. Since all these M1 chips are SoCs with unified memory integrated, there are bigger memory options with M1 Pro and M1 Max. The Air can only have either 8 or 16 gigabytes of memory, while the Pro starts at 16 gigabytes and can be upgraded to 32 or 64 gigabytes of memory with M1 Max. The other difference inside is the internal storage. These internal SSDs, while very expensive, are already fast on the Air. The ones on the Pros are even faster. The Air starts with 256 gigabytes and can go up to 2 terabytes of storage. The Pro starts at 512 gigabytes and can go all the way up to 8 terabytes. Yes, the Pro can run much faster than the Air. And I've seen and ran many benchmarks myself to confirm that. However, just as I expected, when I use both the Air and the Pro to browse the web, take notes, or type out this script, watch YouTube videos, I can't tell much difference in processing power because these relatively simple tasks just can't take advantage of the more powerful processor inside the Pro. Even when I edit photos and videos, I can scrub and make adjustments with ease just the same on both. Now I do see quite a bit of difference in how long it takes to import or export photos and videos. But I don't do that every day. Well, almost every day, but not every day. And I usually do something else once I kick these tasks off anyway. As my main computer, the MacBook Air has been such a pleasure to use this past year. It's fast, very portable, and silent. All the family photos and YouTube videos on this channel has been worked on it. The battery life on both is class leading for laptops. If they start the day fully charged, I can usually use both without worrying about running out of battery on most days unless I'm editing, importing, exporting photos and videos all day long. I think which one is better for you depends on what you plan to do on these amazing tools and your budget. I still think the M1 MacBook Air is the one for most people today. You can see my thoughts on the M1 MacBook Air from last year here and below in the description. I still feel the same way today. If you are on a limited budget and want a laptop to browse the web, take notes, write papers and emails, watch YouTube videos, and even edit photos and videos from time to time, the M1 MacBook Air is still the one with the best bang for the buck. It has been powerful enough for all my family photos and videos on this channel. I also love how portable it is. The battery lasts forever and it runs cool and silent without a fan all day. Now if you work with photos and videos all the time or 3D modeling, code development, or watch a lot of HDR movies, the base MacBook Pro is a substantial upgrade. Not last year's 13-inch MacBook Pro, which I didn't recommend at the time and still don't, but the base 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros. If you have enough budget, 
The extra money spent over the MacBook Air is well worth it if you do these compute intensive tasks every day. Much faster processors. Yes, even the base M1 Pro models. More memory and storage options. A bigger and better display. Yes, with that notch though. And many useful ports, finally. The 14-inch MacBook Pro is still very portable, and the 16-inch MacBook Pro has that big, gorgeous screen. By the way, if you're having a hard time deciding between the two like I was, check out my struggles in the video linked here and below in the description. That was by far the hardest tech decision I made this year. Thanks for watching. If you find any part of this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Are you also considering these Apple inside MacBooks? I'd love to know what you end up getting and why in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember to cherish each moment.